<clears throat> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to <clears throat> how to write effective marketing emails for any situation. And I'm Vito Kukuru, and welcome to the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce Vibe event. It's been a great event so far, and I hope everyone's enjoying the content and everyone who's presenting. <clears throat> so today we're going to talk about writing effective emails. And many people, as you know, the first thing you think about is it can seem daunting. Because you might not know what to send. You might feel it takes too long to write an email. Or you might feel like you're not a good writer. Or maybe you're someone who's been doing email for a while and you're just trying to write your emails in a way to get people to open them, to build a connection with your customers or supporters. And that's really what it's all about. No matter what you feel when you sit down to write an email today, well, we've got you covered. And that's why we've put together this webinar to help you write great emails that actually help your business so that you can break through that barrier and compete in the inbox. We've got some ideas we're going to share today that will hopefully make the process easier for you and get those people to open and click your emails. So let's take a look at the agenda. We're going to start by talking about the different types of emails. Then we're gonna share a simple formula for emails. And finally, we're gonna share some additional tips for writing emails. There's a lot of information in this presentation, some very specific details. So you can grab a pencil or you can contact me after. I'm Vito Kukru, the owner of Consult Vito. There's my website, consultvito.com, and my email address if you're interested in obtaining the slides, and my phone number. I am the Vice President of the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce Board. Next year, I'll be President. And welcome again to this event. And I'm also a Constant Contact Certified Partner, which means I've, um, I've taken a lot of training in Constant Contact, uh, hours and hours. I've passed some tests, and I can sell it as well as use it and help you with it. Generally speaking, we're a marketing consultancy. We do everything from email to social media to just advice in general. If you'd like to book a contact, uh, a discussion with me, a discovery session. There's no charge on behalf of the Chamber. We can talk about your marketing plan, see if there's any free tools you might need to get yourself up and running, and generally speaking, just establish a good relationship on behalf of the Chamber and myself. So let's get into it. We're going to start by talking about the different types of emails. <clears throat> and of course, it always starts with, what should I send? It's important to understand that your email marketing strategy should include a variety of different types of emails and content. Now at a high level, you'll want to include promotional and informational emails. No one wants to be sold to all the time, and if you're a nonprofit, it's hard for people to be donating all of the time. Promotional emails typically have an end date associated with them, and you encourage your readers to take a specific action. That call to action for promotional email may include registering for an event, redeeming a coupon, or making a purchase or donation. An informational email is less sales-driven and more focused on building relationships and providing value to your subscribers. Here, your call to action will drive people to your available content and may include watching an educational video or downloading an ebook. You can even marry the two types together by providing some helpful or valuable information that entices them to make a purchase. Which brings up another question about how much each of these types of emails, and this is where I want to talk about that rule of thumb, the 80-20 rule. You want to provide about 80% promotional content. That way, when you do need to ask for a donation or for someone to purchase, they'll be more likely to actually do it. And this rule will help you plan your email content. And everything we're going to talk about today, it's a good time to mention that this is all constant contact information. It's been tried and tested and it's been proven. And this is through all the research after they send out, you know, literally the platform has thousands and thousands of emails that it sends out a day. So now let's talk a little bit about another question that comes up, and that is how often should I send email? Well, you know, think about it this way. If you sign up for daily email tips, how often are you expecting me to email you? But if you sign up to be emailed twice a month, how often are you expecting it? So really the question of how often is what the expectations are that you set with your list and the people when they contacted you and you told them how often you contact them. But of course, there's gonna be times you deviate from those expectations. 
And that's often due to special circumstances where you're gonna let people know some extra information. For example, maybe there's a, an opportunity to talk to um, them with regards to automated emails. And you want someone to take further action in those emails because there's no one size fits all for how often you send. But if you're looking for a minimum, we suggest at least once a month. So now let's move on to the automated emails. And automated emails are very helpful and very useful. And we're talking about the opportunity when someone signs up for a list, they may go directly to the segment and that list that you've established and receive an email as a result because there's a trigger when they're added to that list. A lot of email platforms have that capability. So when someone fills out a form, it automatically populates to a list because they're on that list. An automated email sends out right after they fill out that form. And that's what we're talking about in automated emails. So in most cases, obviously, we're talking about a welcome email. And that sends right away, and that's obviously beneficial. You can welcome people to your list in your business. You don't want people to sign up and then not hear from you for weeks, as they may just forget about you. A welcome email is great to fulfill an offer, and if you entice people to sign up, they may get a free resource or discount. If you want to take that a step further, you can create a full series of emails that introduces people to your business over a period of time after signing up. So for a welcome series, you simply add a second email, and then a third, and the third may end up having a promotional coupon. The first may welcome you, and the second may be, here's what's in store with regards to emails, or here's a little more information about your business. Now, another type of automated email is the birthday email. It's, good. it's obviously great when someone receives a birthday notice and it makes your audience feel special. You can simply let people know you're paying attention and that you care. Depending on your business, you could also include a coupon or a special offer to use on their birthday. And that can be used for any business. So you have a list of people, a special offer for them, and you can customize that as well. And then there's the anniversary email. And obviously another automated email, which could be great for wedding anniversaries, but it doesn't have to be just for that. If you're a realtor, it could be a home buyer anniversary. If you're a nonprofit, it could be to celebrate a pet's adoption. And because it sends on the anniversary, or even it could be a renewal reminder if you're offering yearly packages. So these types of emails are important to help you stay top of mind with your readers without a lot of effort from you. Now let's talk about some other types of emails, offers and promotions, some of the most common types of emails that you're gonna send. They're pretty straightforward and you can choose to promote whatever you need, but for these types of emails, you're directly asking people to do something that affects your bottom line. So think about offering a coupon, a discount, promoting that product or service, or providing a free resource or ask them to book a consultation. Now, if you're a nonprofit, think about promotions as your fundraising campaign or asking for volunteers. Just make sure to include any instructions to get the resource or redeem a coupon and make sure you include an end date for those promotions so that you know exactly when the revenue should come in and you can track how successful that promotion was. Of course, there's e event emails. Not only can you promote your event and encourage registrations, but you can send save the date emails to give people a heads up about your event. And then of course, send reminder emails. Remind people to register, remind registrants when the event date is as you get closer so that they don't forget. Of course, there's holiday emails. We're coming up on the holiday season, and you want to use those to celebrate holidays with your audience. Whether you want to celebrate a more formal holiday, such as Valentine's Day, or have some fun with holidays, such as National Donut Day, this type of email content is a great way to encourage and engage your readers to take action. So you can find some of these more obscure holidays just through a Google search, looking for different holidays that are coming up every month. And you can always include that as an interesting part of your general informational newsletter. So now let's get into some how-to emails. You can include helpful hints. And these emails are gonna vary based on the type of business or organization you have. So essentially, you're providing helpful information that helps people get started, maintain, and effectively use your products or services. 
And that means sharing step-by-step instructions or videos, DIY information, checklists and guides, and even tips. Even if you don't feel like your business or organization needs to directly provide how-to information for products, think about related things. So a restaurant could send some how-to information for recipes or even kitchen design or organizing tips. If you're a nonprofit, maybe there's a way you can help people help raise their children with some how-to information like making sure you're spending quality family time and how to do that or something along those lines. What's most important with email marketing is to understand it's not a one-way communication channel because you can use it to gain feedback and information. You want to understand what your audience, their needs, their wants, and experiences they have with your business. You want to hear from your audience so you can provide more of what they want and need. So one example you can send to recent customers, ask for a review about their experience. For this type of email, just link to your preferred review site. You can also link to a survey or poll in order to understand what your audience better. You can use a survey if you want to ask a series of questions depending on what you're looking to accomplish. You could potentially ask them about how you can improve your services, gain feedback, or even ask people what their interests are in regards to your email. The ideas for creating a dialogue are endless. So use these types of emails in your strategy to prove your trustworthiness and show your email subscribers you really do care. Another type of email you can send is share some behind the scenes information. It's a great way to humanize your business. Show real people working behind the scenes, making a product or helping customers. You might feature employees in their position and mission within your company. If you're a nonprofit, you can feature volunteers or even the day-to-day operation of your organization. You could feature behind the scenes of how you provide a service to show your credibility to your clients and how your product is made to ensure that they understand it's a high quality product. Now, newsletters, now we're gonna specifically talk about news, and typically we recommend putting only one topic in your emails, especially if you're trying to drive action. However, your organization may find it valuable to send a newsletter that includes a few different topics. So if you're gonna go this route, we suggest making sure you're segmenting your audience. They can understand what the list is that you're gonna have and the topics that you're gonna cover. And when you're talking about specific activities like news, it's always good to maybe pull some industry news or some business news or some local happenings in the area. All will add credibility to your newsletter. And getting into the meat of the newsletters, Think about that segmentation that I just spoke about. If you can find out that if you're a pet store and you have cat owners or dog owners, maybe put them on two different lists with two different newsletters and have a third list that maybe is people who have dogs and cats or people who don't have pets. The more you're speaking to them and the more people who maybe don't have pets but who are in the market for pets and you may have you know, uh, obtained their information from a variety of different sources when you're at a booth and you're collecting information from them, the more you segment, the more targeted that message becomes, the more people are going to be interested in the content that you're providing. And again, we like to think of it three topics at most, and obviously use those read more links. You don't want to give everything away in your newsletter because it'll uh, tend to look extremely long, but you can connect to different topics, different pieces of news, and different areas of interest that people may have. And you can use those read more links often as a way to segment the list further. So if you have a certain topic in your newsletter and you can use that button to segment people further, then you really get to understand what topics people are enjoying most. And when you use those read more links and you start looking at your clicks, you can start to take that information, maybe marry it to your website, Google Analytics, which is a free product that Google provides that you can put on your website, understand where your traffic is, the kind of people who are going to your website. And then if you take that information with your newsletter, then you start looking at your social media. And now all of a sudden, you're starting to build your own data and analytics, which is a a buzz phrase in marketing. And you can start building it as a small business owner. You can start building it as a solopreneur, start to understand your complete audience by using those three sources. And that's really can start with your constant contact or your MailChimp or whatever email provider you're using, and then marrying it to your social media, marrying it to your website information. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about a simple formula to write your emails. So we've covered the different types. Now let's get into just a real easy way to start to build those emails. 
The first question we always get is, well, how long should an email be? And, you know, generally speaking, the research has said about 20 lines of text or 200 words result in the highest click-through rate for most industries. But like I said, there's a variety of factors to think about. Some emails are going to be longer and some are going to be shorter just because of the type of email and what you're trying to accomplish. So that's generally 20 lines of text, 200 words, generally no more than three topics. So now we're really starting to add some structure. So let's get into some samples and look at how this information is being presented. And these two emails, the promotion on the left has less text than the one on the right when they're sharing educational information along with the video. So you want to provide just enough information to keep them interested and get them to take the action that's going to be unique to each email campaign. Another example would be if your call to action is bigger and you want someone to RSVP to your events. For some events, your reader is probably going to need more information to make a decision. In that case, well, your email may be a little bit longer. But let's get back into that structuring of the email. All emails are probably going to follow the same basic formula. There's a picture, a paragraph, and a call to action. Now, we're going to talk about nonprofit and for-profit. First, we're going to start with for-profit businesses, and now we're going to start to get into the content and the three questions you're going to want to ask as you build your email. Once you know what kind of what you want your email content to be about, sit down and start to write that content. And just remember that all emails are going to follow the same basic formula and now let's get into those questions. The first question is, what are you offering? You want to answer this briefly for it to be your headline. You want to pique your reader's interest and make them want to read more, which leads us to how will it help the reader? This is where you want to provide details. Remember to keep it short, but provide just enough information to give readers the information they need to be able to take action. And the third question is that call to action. For this, you're going to want to answer, how should they, what should they do next? Tell them specifically what it is you want them to do. You might want them to make a purchase, schedule a consultation, or even get more information. And over here on the right, you can start to see how that translates for this particular business on the Family Portrait Promotion. And the headline, they're talking about the benefit along with the promotion. And then in the message body, they provide the details on capturing family moments when the offer expires, and the details on when they need to schedule in order to take advantage of the offer. Their button is asking people to schedule the portrait session and links to an online scheduling tool. So there's those three questions with answers in a format for, for the for-profit businesses. Now, let's talk about that one more time. We can see here that they're offering four tips to make flowers last longer in the first example. And then for how we'll help the reader, we can see they provide the tips, then suggest to try one of these tips with their next order, which leads you into shop now. In the second example, there's a headline, shows the benefits of the reader, which is to boost brand awareness with a free gift. Then in the body, they provide the details about how content is king for why the reader should care, and that leads into a free guide for the call to action. And the last one, you can see something similar. The company's done some work with the client's website and they're providing some next steps information. We can see in the body there are three tips that lead into asking the client to log into their dashboard for the call to action. Now let's get into nonprofits and see how these three questions will be just a little bit different. And for the nonprofits in the audience, what you're going to start to ask are, what are you trying to accomplish? Why should the reader care in the message body? And then you have your call to action. You're going to answer, how can the reader get involved? So what are you trying to accomplish? Why should the reader care? How can the reader get involved? Often your supporters want to see your progress and how they're helping you to make a difference. So you might slightly rephrase these questions to be past tense if you're sharing follow-up information to show what you've accomplished. So let's take a look at this example on the right of the screen. And here we can see what this nonprofit wanted to get volunteers, and they let people know that in the headline. Then in the body, they let readers know details about the volunteer opportunity, 
and also ask them to fill out a form to sign up as a volunteer on specific dates. So let's take a quick look at some more nonprofit examples. First, the answer, what are you trying to accomplish by using the headline, help us save more animals in need? Then they provide the details with the staff to let the reader know why they should care. And then save a pup is the call to action. For the second example, you're following up to share results from last year. So it's a good instance of where you want to use past tense versions. And they answered with the total pounds of food harvested from the community garden, and then provided details that the reader's volunteer time have helped to accomplish that. And they included a call to action to keep people interested on the ways they are preparing for next year. The last one is a donation drive. They're trying to get people to donate, so that's pretty straightforward. And then providing a list of items that they can help with in order to help the children complete their list of community projects. Then they've also included a link for people to donate to the cause even if they don't have any of the listed items. So as you can see, the same nonprofit questions are helpful no matter what type of email you want to send. So you have a formula that you can follow for your content. But the next question we always get is, I, I don't want to have to write all of it, and maybe you don't have the time or you want to provide other types of information. So you can find articles and information that relate to your audience or your industry. You can curate content for your email and even on social media. Basically, you're gonna look for content that can be helpful to your readers and share it with your own audience. So here's a few tips on curating content. The first step is to find content that's related to your business and industry. There's gonna be thousands of new articles that are published every day. And you can stay on top of things with a tool that displays content for different search terms that you choose. You can do a search for keywords, get Google News Alerts. There's a lot of different ways to get content into your feed. So, for example, if you're a yoga studio, you might search for keywords relating to fitness and nutrition. If you're a B2B company selling industrial equipment to contractors, find content relating to the construction industry. Think about news or regulations or even building designs. Or, for example, if you're an animal shelter, curate content on pet care, tips on training a new pet. Schedule some time once a week. Take a look at all those articles that you might that you think people would find interesting. Now, the second step, and is something a lot of people leave out on social media and email marketing, is add some perspective when you're sharing this content. Don't just copy and paste. It's important because it will make the information you're sharing more personal and provide more value. And there's a few ways to add your perspective. Ask a question to help engage potential readers to get them thinking. Summarize the content and explain the main idea or share a key takeaway. Or you can even highlight a quote from the article and share why you think it's a good read for your audience. And the third step, perhaps the most important step, is give credit to the original author. Share the content, of course, but make sure you're giving credit so the audience knows where you're getting that content. All you have to do is add a text block there to link to the original content or to link to the company that's providing the content, but obviously it's critical to give credit. So find the content, offer perspective, and give credit. That's one way to get more content into your email newsletter. Now the next question, of course, and one of the more important pieces to get people to open your email is the subject line. Generally speaking, you've got about 100 milliseconds to form an impression. And the truth is your subscribers are forming impressions of your emails just as quickly. You don't have much time to capture readers' attention, so you have to make it count. Now, as much as I'd love to be able to give you all a winning subject line structure that will work, I can't. I, it's, going, it's, going to be, it's going to vary based on the audience you're targeting, as well as your business and the industry you're in. But what we can do today is provide tips and suggestions on what to consider in order to get it right for your business and the personality of your brand. So the length of your subject line, very important, somewhere between four to seven words. So let's talk about the things you're going to consider to write that good subject line and creating that great subject line between four to seven words. So just remember, we've now given you a little structure on the content. Now we're going to move into subject lines. So personally, I generally write the subject line last before I send anything out. and allows me to really look at the content of the email so I can write a subject line that speaks to what my content is about. 
It's a very important rule because you want to make sure you're not writing a subject line that is misleading people just to get them to click and open the email. So when you look at your content, think about what you're trying to accomplish with your email. You could potentially plot a key phrase from the body or even include something relating to your call to action within the subject line. And your email should really focus on the benefits of why the reader should care or how your email can help the reader. Remember, those are the questions that are going to help you write your email's body copy as well. So make that subject line reflect that and show them the benefit to opening the email. So let's get into some samples. You can use humor, make them laugh, incorporate numbers. You can be inquisitive asking your readers a question. You can pull at their heartstrings. You can create a sense of urgency. And you can make it personal if you have the people's names to make it personal. You want to make sure that you've collected first name, last name, and email address, especially first name if you're trying to make it personal. And also making it personal using you or your. It's always good to address someone as if it's a one-to-one -one communication and not a gen generally speaking. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the pre-header. It's important to think about that text that will display right below or after your subject line in the inbox. Your subject line and pre-header text should complement each other. A subject line can be short and catchy, whereas your pre-header text is your chance to elaborate a bit to give some detail. So for the pre-header text, use a variety of strategies from the subject line tips that we just talked about. And also now, we're talking about a pre-header text five to eight words. Keep in mind, the amount displayed will actually vary based on each device and even each email program. So subject lines, four to seven words, pre-header text, about five to eight words. Now let's talk about some more tips. So think about the questions you get when you're a business. Maybe someone comes in or you have frequently asked questions that, you're, that your team is constantly getting. That would be great content because you're going to address the questions before people actually start to ask them. And finally, let's do a quick recap on what we've learned today. We want to include a variety of type of emails and content in your strategy. We want to answer those three questions to write the text for your email. And for-profit businesses and non-profit businesses, we're talking about the headline, what they, the message body, how will it help the reader, and what should they do next. For nonprofits, what are we trying to accomplish? What should the, why should the reader care, and how can that reader get involved? You want to get personal, send targeted, relevant information. It's not uncommon to have many different lists and many different segments on your emails and many different types of emails that go out. So again, an example would be a pet store. Maybe you have dog owners. Maybe you have cat owners. Maybe you have people who are looking to adopt but haven't quite adopted yet. Maybe you have people who have uh, fish. Maybe you have people who have multiple types of animals. You're going to start talking to them directly. As a cat owner, you may want only to talk to people about your cat products, obviously, dog owner gets the dog owner specifically, and then the general people in your pet list can get all sorts of information. So targeting can be very important and can really increase your effective rates. So again, appreciate everyone attending today on behalf of the chamber and myself. And here's my email address if you're interested in a constant contact trial. It is free if you want to sort of get your feet wet with it. I'm a certified partner. Also speaking on behalf of the chamber, I do offer discovery sessions talking about your marketing, really specializing in just about um, digital, but also I have a lot of experience in general marketing, offline marketing, and I've had a long career um, at various agencies working on a lot of different types of clients. And if nothing else, if you walk out of the discovery session, we don't have to work together in a client um, relationship, we can establish just a good peer-to-peer -peer relationship where you have someone to count on for some marketing information. I enjoy doing that, expanding my network and getting people interested in marketing because marketing right now has become very complicated and very difficult with regards to uh, how fast it's moving and how many different types of marketing programs are available and how quickly you know social media changes and how fast Facebook makes different changes to their algorithm which can be very disruptive to how you're doing your marketing programs. So I do appreciate everyone joining us. I want to thank everyone on behalf of the Chamber and myself. And if there's any questions uh, that you have, please feel free to 
email them to me or feel free to ask them right now. So let's see. I think we have, uh, yes, I, we have, I do have um, experience in just about all forms of marketing if you're interested in having that discovery session. And it looks like we have um, a request in the queue. See if I can, can find that. Um, I don't see anything in the chat box. If, any, if you want to put any requests in the chat box or any questions, I'm comfortable answering. I know it's we're just about time because it's 11 o'clock, 11.01. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, you can reach out to me directly at veto at consultveto.com. You can see my website for more information, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, and have a great day. <laughs>